Now, Victoria, when you get pulled over by the police, I'm, I, I'll say not even pulled over, but when you see a police officer driving past you, do you get nervous? Absolutely. And what Absolutely. Do you get I get nervous because I understand that whatever I do means I'm guilty, whether I do something or not. So it just, your heart automatically sinks because there's nothing you can do to, to walk away. You're completely at that police officer's mercy. If they're feeling merciful and they're feeling like they don't want to deal with it, then they'll let you go. But if they feel like making a scene of you or making you feel some type of way, they a hundred percent will. So you live through both. Like your entire next few moments come down to how well you behave or how well you don't. So you, you have to always be in check and on top of your attitude, your mood, your facial expressions. This actually recently happened to me with a friend of mine. And, the, you know, from the process, I wasn't driving, but the process of just getting your registration out and handing it over, being tired, the, it was actually a police woman looked at her and said, oh, don't give me that face. And, and I'm like, what kind of face can you interpret from, from this situation? Any kind of face. So rather than fight or, or have an attitude, you, you just have to realize that they can make up whatever they want and it'll work. Now, Victoria, where did you get stopped in, in Chicago? Oh, I actually got stopped in the suburbs. So yeah. I was, mm-hmm, I was like, um, I was around like Niles. And, oh, Niles. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. So a North suburb. You know, that's interesting. Um, Cortez can agree with this and I'm sure Mark J. Yoakum as well as Taj can perhaps agree with this. You know, there's a part in the city, um, just south of the city where every black person gets really concerned and make sure he got his insurance card and his registration when he drives through that place. And that's Evergreen Park. Now, um, I used to, when I lived in the city, I used to live right by Evergreen Park. And whenever it was a car stopped there, you look in there, it was someone with a dark paint job that got stopped. And most of the time when they got stopped by the Evergreen Park police, they got their car taken, towed. I don't know if that still happens, but we are familiar Ralph, with that. Is that correct, Cortez? I actually live right across the street from Evergreen Park. So yeah, it happens. But uh, I'm sorry for uh, our sister had to deal with that. Uh, I, we all have to deal with it, but you know I don't I don't fear that motive no more. Uh, Reason being because because uh, my paper's good, and I actually they make a lot of officers mad. Oh really? How the, slow, macaroni? Yes, I got pulled over twice, three times in the last couple of years, and they couldn't find nothing. And see, now we're at a time where officers are looking for something. A, a, um, a cracked uh, light, something. But see, when you got your papers together, they actually get upset, and they and they and your and your driver license good, everything good. They mad because they can't find anything. So now, mm-hmm. now let me ask you a question, Taj. Um, are you are you um, concerned when you drive at nighttime through Evergreen Park or Oak Lawn areas? Um, that's an interesting point that you had said, because I'm not, because you know, I, and I know the gentleman and the lady may get to him, the cops kind of know who's what is what, because I'm on the side where they are, I, I see them waving at me and smiling, I, I see a different thing, but the interesting point when you came to Evergreen, because I remember it was about six or seven months ago, I, I, I had a youth with me for my non profit you know, Sharon, and we went to Evergreen Park, and there was a car park. And you, you know how they have, I have a handicap place, but you know how they have the yellow stripes where, where it's not the park. I had pulled there because it was a car, it was a car that was there that somebody pulled out. And I, you know, pulled in there not thinking nothing, right? So I was going getting some some supplies and come back and there was a ticket on the car. And I'm like, what? I just saw this. So I ended up going to the station at Evergreen Park and paid for it. And I, I went on the pay, paid it. But it was interesting what the lady had said. She said, Mr. Jones, uh, um, have a nice day. We'll see you again. And I was like, see me again? It's not like I'm willfully trying to do stuff to come here in the first place. That's not the conversation I had to have. But I think what leads to the situation, and I keep going back to prayer, because a lot of stuff that's going on with the police, if we look back and look at the overall picture, 
laws was written and laws, if you know this over the last few years, help aid in the police doing what they're doing. Remember, it was a time where it wasn't as many parking um, meters, right? It wasn't no red camera, it wasn't even seat belts. So you could freely go about your business. But when they start creating these laws, those laws help give the police force a little bit more, how should I say, power, right? Am, am I agreeing, gentlemen? If you notice what has transpired that led to this love, it's more than just the police. It's the legislation because they pass a lot of stuff, hidden cameras, different things that at first, years ago, it wasn't even there. So that's why I keep saying that it's, it's still prayer that comes in there. And that's a good point, Mr. Cortez, man. Because if you got your papers right and you everything, you could be calm. As a matter of fact, I, I, I said in one episode, you can smile if they come and stop you. If so you let, me, let me ask you, hold on. Let me ask you a question. Now, Charles, it's something very important that you say that. Okay. Now, um, it was re- it was in the news um, just last week where two cops, um, I believe it was in, I don't call me, I think it was, in a, it was in the state of South Carolina, but they got um, fired from their jobs because they were rec- heard being recorded saying, we can't w- wait to get out here and kill some more of these niggers. We can't wait to get them. Uh, we- so first nigger we get, we're going to arrest and we're going to go ahead and take them in. Now, what does that have to do with being calm if they have it in for you? If, if the cop says, you know what, my beat starts from five in the, in the evening all the way to seven in the morning. So um, I'm just, well, first nigger I see, I'm taking them out. Um, what is what can you do if you have a mark on your back? Well, like now, I said before, and I know the gentleman and the lady may beat up on me. You still got to. Oh, here's the thing: if you're gonna go out, you're gonna go out. But I'm just saying, I will try to say be calm because maybe, like I had said, if you pray for something, you just get stopped. You calm, they have made let you go as opposed to somebody else that want to talk back and give confrontation where it'd be easy for them to say, let's shoot this person, let's beat them up and, and, and get that rush going. You see what I'm saying? As opposed to, because I think they, I think, you know what? It was one that they said that kind of come my, I think they was trying to arrest a teenager or something like that. And the teenager started singing a Christian song. Mm-hmm. And by the singing the Christian song, the police left them alone. Okay, Chad, hold on. Let me get let me get let me hear some other people now. All right, Mark, mm-hmm. let me hear what's your what's your take on that? Um I, it's, 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 <laughs> I know what he's <laughs> now, now, Mark, let me now, Mark, before you answer no, that. Hey, the answer is right here, just like Donald Trump was saying. It's all here. You, you know what? You know what? Like I said, that Bible has been there since our existence in 1619 here in this country and we still been getting hung and 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 beat down and shot and all that stuff you know so it's gonna take a bit more than that man i mean that that's great and even donald trump holding the bible up was just such a farce in itself you know it was just so so phony it was nothing more than a, a photo op you know and especially the way he went about doing it pushing all the people uh, peaceful processors out the way even before the curfew actually took place. But it's going to take a bit more than that. Um, you know, um, we, we, we just got a long way to go. And, and right now it's good that we have momentum and uh, we're trying to take down these statues, these Confederate statues. And, you know, uh, we're looking at a lot of issues that we haven't looked at before. And I think right now we need to keep this momentum going. We really need to keep pushing and um, really attacking this systemic racism, you know, while we're uh, while we well while we're really focused on it, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, while while I mean, black folks have been focused on it, but it's ain't like it's you know other people now, other races that are you know taken into these uh, marches and protests and stuff like that, you know, just like with um, even the companies like with Aunt Jemima and and Uncle Ben, you know, after a hundred and thirty something years of using you know, those black faces and, and, and those negative stereotypes, you know, they decided to uh, go a different route now, which I find that to be kind of uh, comical, but I'm glad that they're actually doing it, even if it is 131 years later. But now, yeah, we have to keep this uh, momentum going and uh, try to keep, you know, tearing down all these uh, walls and, and uh, of uh, racism and, and tear down the systemic uh, oppression. We're not, never going to end it completely. But I think right now at this point is being 
addressed a lot more than it has probably at any other point in this uh, uh, nation, probably, you know, uh, maybe do more so to uh, George Floyd and everybody witnessing the um, actual lynching that took place, you know, mm -hmm. so. Now, interesting thing enough. Now, uh, just for a little station identification, this is Sherrard from The Sherrard Show. We're doing a very special segment on the show um, entitled Being Black in America, How Can We Be Able to Alleviate and Wipe Out Racism? Again, we're speaking with uh, Mr. Cortez Mack, uh, Mark J. Yoakum, Tajadina Jones, as well as Victoria Davison. Um, the Sherrard Show, again, is sponsored you by Harold's Chicken. Now, let's turn it. Um, let's kind of switch gears for a minute. Um, because there's some video footage out there, and it's going to be rolling in, uh, on that um, on your screen. Um, and it's called Coon Train. And um, it's about Black people being sellouts, all right? Now, um, when you talk about being a sellout or being an Uncle Tom, um, a preacher, you, you're shaking your head. What are you shaking your head for? Now, and, and, and gentlemen, that, that's, that's, what, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, I know they're going to beat up on me. If we can come together, and I'm going to say this, that's why I say the Bible is the key, because you're right. Some of these, what Mark was saying was absolutely true, but I'm going to tell you something from a different point of view. You got to put God, it says, in all thy ways acknowledge God, and he will direct your path. I know he keeps saying, let me finish it. Here, you wait, hold on, so I, we're the people. You gotta let people are not going to change it. We have to focus it on somebody. It has to be God on that because you have people that don't like. Here's the thing: if you know, they said not black women is starting. It feel, like, it feel like we on CNN now. You're not letting me finish. And I'm the host of the show. <laughs> oh, I'm oh, sorry, God. but I was, just, I was just trying to to, to see the point of how simple it is to try to do. Because even if all the statues is taken down, is that statue putting food on your plate? Is a statue feeding you? Is, is a statue giving you money? No. Minute, Hold on, preacher. You got to you got to wait. You got to wait. You're missing the point. Now, okay. the point I'm, I'm mentioning here, you got all fired up. You got a certain you ready to get the collection plate and everything. Hold on now. <laughs> now, the, the thing is this. Um, my question is now, oftentimes you hear people saying, you know, that somebody's a sellout there in Uncle Tom just because they may not agree with what um, everything a black person is saying against a white person. But then you get um, someone who is just all black in terms of their view of things, and it can be based upon illogical rationale opposed to what's logical. Now, I'm going to start with you, Cortez. Now, give me a definition of a level-headed black person that's not a sellout and somebody that is a sellout. A level-headed person is Colin Powell. And why do you say that? because he's a respectable black Republican who's logical, who's smart, who's wise, who's been uh, serving this country for a long time. And it's just sad that this is one of the prestigious black men in America that nobody on the side of Donald Trump wants to talk to because those people are irrational. Now, now give us an example of, of a sellout. You don't have to name names. Everybody who sit at the table with Donald Trump who black. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you why. Because regardless where you at in life, you should not talk down to your own people in front of somebody else. This is the only, we're the only people who would sit at the table of somebody the opposite of us and throw your own people under the table. Good point. That's a cool. That's a sellout. Good point. Big time. What, about you, what about you, Victoria, being an African-American female? What, um, give us an example of someone you feel is a level-headed black person. Um, to be honest, I don't really think that that question is actually answerable, given the nature of racism itself. If you're saying that the people who are the product of systematic and violent oppression throughout about 400 years of history in the U.S., could any of them sit at a table with the experiences that they had and say, one, I'm level-headed, and two, I'm not a sellout? I don't think there's a person that could raise their hand and say that I haven't been in one of the categories at some point. The, the nature of the system itself wants us to attack each other. So if it succeeds in doing it, it's further perpetuated. So I think <laughs> once we start looking at and breaking apart the actual system that's oppressing us, we can get past it. All I have to do to be a black person is just be born. So that should be enough. That should be enough. 
Excellent, excellent, this or that. excellent point. Mm -hmm. Excellent point. Um, what about you, Mark? What do you say? Um, I mean, a, a, a sellout would be someone. Well, I mean, a level-headed person, I, I would think, would be someone obviously that can think and uh, um, be rational, rational, and and, and um, in all situations, and and have a, a be of sound mind, and. Um, as far as being a sellout, I mean, you can look at maybe like Ben Carson, you know what I mean? Or some, some you know, uh, like in Trump's cabinet or, you know, uh, you know, someone of, of, of that nature that, that, uh, doesn't acknowledge their own people and, and think that other people of other races are better in their own people and look down upon their own people. So there's, there's plenty of people you can, um, you know, uh, put out in that category, Stacey Dash or whoever, you know, Candace Owens, you know. Um, so. Interesting. Yeah. All right, so, and, and what about you? What would you say? Who would you consider as a level headed person? And what's your definition of a coon or a sellout? Well, uh, you're talking uh, you about me? I'm talking to you. Me? Oh, me, me to answer? Well, you know me. I, I'm, I'm not the one really that. Uh, mention any names um, or, or something that comes out. But what, what it is, is it's a spirit. Um, spirit of jealousy and envyness, and that's what the sad part. You know that Harriet Tubman movie, it was one quote that was said was, she said, that she, I think she freed like a thousand slaves. She said she could have freed a thousand more slaves only if they knew that they were slaves. So if people knew that they are sellout or something like that, some of them don't even know that they are. You know what I'm saying? And most the, people do. Most people do. Um, that's like if you're a liar. If you're a liar, you skip. Kanye you, West know he's a sellout. Candace <laughs> Owens knows she's a sellout. <laughs> Diamond and Silk know they're sellouts. You think so? Do you think? Everybody who sit at the table, Donald Trump to throw you down as a black man is a sellout. Oh, because no. Donald Trump ain't throwing the KKK under the bus. So, come on now, we got to be honest and real with this. We can't keep uh, uh, being fluff with this stuff. This stuff is real. It's easy right. to say this stuff and bring up the scriptures until it hits home. The reason why racism doesn't exist because we're trying to figure out something we didn't create. Very good. Why people created this? Now, 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 Mr. Cortez Mack, now you see how you subliminally say, I, I'm just, I'm just, which we're all entitled to our opinions and views, right? I'm just coming from the scripture standpoint because I love God. I trust God. God has been good. I'm still being blessed. Right. You know, the key is, is there's still balance between good and evil. If we want to save the streets, right? There's evil forces in the streets. If I'm trying to tell you, hey, there's a way that you can be saved and I can help you, and you listen, don't want listen. to be saved, that's I'm on not you. Trying to, listen, bro, I'm not trying to hear that because evangelical churches are molesting boys. And ain't nobody saying nothing about that. But everybody want to talk about Black Lives Matter is a terrorist group. Right. See, everybody want to focus on the black problem when the black problem's in the front. But then again, but then the, uh, uh, the opioids, Ain't nobody saying white lives matter with them over, over overdosing, are they? White lives don't matter with opioids, do they? No, but it just no, seems like when it comes to the black problem, hold up, when it comes to the black problem, all of a sudden, everybody want to have the answer. But, but, but at the end of the day, we're not worse off than no other culture. We're just thrown in the front. And all this is doing is keep causing distraction of something that we already know the answer to. It's systemic.